So at this juncture, the Mac OS users and the Windows users should be in the same spot. We should both have Ruby as well as VS Code successfully installed. And the next thing we want to do is to install some helpful extensions within VS Code. So VS Code is a general all-purpose text editor that actually works with a wide variety of programming languages and coding ecosystems. So we install extensions or plugins to enable additional features and functionalities within the editor. And some of these extensions are going to help the editor specifically recognize Ruby and its syntax. And another extension that we're going to install is going to allow us to run our Ruby code directly within VS Code itself. So an extension is almost like an add-on or an expansion pack to the core editor. So let me show you. Right here on the left-hand side, you'll see this panel of icons. And we want to look for this one right here. That's the collection of cubes stacked on top of each other. And if I click that, that's going to reveal the extensions panel right here where we can search for extensions. The first one I want to search for right here in the input is going to be Ruby. And the first result that pops up should be this one. It is Ruby by Peng LV. And to install the extension, it's as simple as just pressing the blue install button and that will set up the extension. What this one will do is enable VS Code to recognize our Ruby syntax. And that's going to allow it to help us do things like auto completion, identify mistakes in our syntax, um, color code and highlight it based on important segments or fragments of it, things like that. The second extension I want to install is called Code Runner. So once again, I'm going to search for code space runner. And this very top result by Jun Han is the one we want. So press install right here. And once again, that will set up the extension within VS Code. This extension, much like the name suggests, allows us to run our code directly within the editor. So we'll be able to write our code within a Ruby file and then see a panel on the right hand side with the actual output from the file, the result that that file generates. All right, so those are the only two required extensions. There are two more that I want to show you, and these are completely optional, and they deal with the look and feel of the editor, the aesthetics, in other words. So how you make your editor look as far as the background colors and the font colors and things like that is totally a matter of personal preference. But just in case you want your editor to look exactly like mine, the color theme that I'm using is called Winter is Coming. So if you want that, you can search for Winter is Coming. It's this theme right here from uh, John Papa. And once you click the install button, if you want the exact color that I have, you can click set color theme and choose Winter is Coming, dark blue, no italics. Once again, that is totally optional. Your editor probably looks different from mine right now. And if you want to find your own custom theme, have at it. It's one of those you know, personal uh, artistic expressions, if you will. Just in case you want it to look exactly like mine, this is the theme that I'm using. And then as far as my icons, which is going to represent the little images that pop up next to my files in the file explorer, which we'll talk about a little later, I'm also using material icon. If you search for that and you click on this one, it's the material icon theme. That's the one that I'm using. And this will just simply show you different icons depending on different files that you have within your a project. So for example, if you have a PDF file, it's going to show you the PDF logo. For Ruby, it's going to show you the Ruby uh, diamond, I believe, things like that. Let me find Ruby right here in this list. It's a very long list of icons. So all of my Ruby files are going to have that nice Ruby gem. Again, this is purely a matter of aesthetic preference, but this is what I'm going to be using so that whenever I have a list of all the files in my projects, each one will have this little icon annotation next to it to tell me what kind of file it is. And once you have those two, those optional two extensions, then your editor should look pretty much the same as mine. Once again, the only extensions that are required for this course are going to be Ruby as well as Code Runner. All right, that's all there is to cover in this lesson, so I will see you in the next one.